Okay. So, to, to follow up um, this uh, discussion, um, I want to uh, comment on on what is meant by isochronal in a clear way so that everybody gets it. It's the isochronal part of testing. Um, Uh, what's really meant by that is that you want to find an A and a B should be the same for all rates in the multi-rate test, okay? It's so that you can, basically you've got um, test number one, two, three, and four. And you might have the duration of the test in hours. Um, two, eight, you know, four, and 24, okay? Something like that. That's clearly not isochronal. So, in order to satisfy this, the A and B, this should be the same for each rate. You've got your rates here, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. And you also have a flowing bottom hole pressure, PWF1, PWF2, PWF3, and PWF4. I'm going to talk about the standard isochronal test. The standard isochronal test, the only requirement is that between each flow rate, there's a shut-in. Okay? That's the requirement. In the standard, there's a shut-in between each flow. When permeability is high enough, during that shut-in of maybe 12 hours or 24 hours, whatever it is, they go home and go to sleep, uh, the pressure builds up essentially to the initial pressure if the permeability is high enough. Okay? Now, in order to satisfy that these well, B is not time dependent. The A is. If we if we haven't reached pseudo steady state, and during two hours is probably we haven't reached pseudo steady state. Maybe not even in the twenty four hours. Maybe maybe not. We don't know. So the only way to guarantee this A and B is that what you want to do is that you want to. I'm just going to sketch this test for you. And I'm only going to plot the rates, uh, or the, yeah. Let me, I'll do both. Okay. That was two hours. This 24 is going to be a little bit hard to pick up, 24.
Okay, so this, I'm going to say this is two hour intervals. Okay, I'll try to make this plot right. And then we increase the rate. Generally, you increase the rate each time. I'm not sure if that's always, it's not always the case, but it's just, I'm just going to do that. So now the next one, I'm going to increase the rate and we open this choke and it jumps up like that. And then it goes for eight hours. Two, four, six, eight. Okay. So now that's a total of 10 hours. And then I increase the rate again. Over four hours. It goes something like that. So now I'm at 14 hours. And then we run this long. I'm going to make 12 hours instead of 12 instead of 12 just to make it easier. Okay. And for some reason I'm going to lower the rate. Okay. I maybe I shouldn't. But, uh, well, okay, let's, let's say that. Let's say I keep increasing the rate. And now I go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. That was okay. Why is the rate decreasing? Because what you do is you change the choke. And when you change the choke, because the system is a dynamic system, uh, when you the, the, there's a the four different choke sizes at the surface, and what will always happen is that you'll get a a rate increase, and then w whether it decreases how much I don't know, but it'll it'll have a transient. Because you're not controlling the rate with a rate controller. So these are just four different chokes. Okay, so this is um, four thirty seconds of an inch. Uh, this was uh, eight thirty second uh, thirty seconds of an inch. This is I don't know what uh, ten maybe ten. Maybe this was 16 or something. Half inch choke. Open it. Something like that. And then I'll make the um, green or something. That's oil. So. Purple. Orange. There you go. So I'll make this um, the pressure drop. This is the initial pressure. going to get a little bit messy when you're crossing it first. Initial pressure. So this one's going to go down like this. The bigger rate, we're going to get a bigger pressure drop. Like that. Bigger rate again. Bigger pressure drop. And then a bigger rate again. Like that. Okay. That practically is what it's going to look like in real life. It's going to be a transit, each one. So what's meant by um, isochronal, it, all you have to do to make it an isochronal test analysis is that you, you pick the rate and pressure at the same amount of time. Okay. I've, I've, I've screwed this up. This, I'm just going to give me a second. In between here, there's a shut-in. Okay. Between each. I, I, I didn't put it there because then I'm going to be off the chart. Okay. But in between here, there's a shut-in long enough to bring this. So, so I'm going to change the pressure plot. I'm going to change this to reflect that. There's a shut-in between each one of these. Okay, so during the shut-in, the pressure builds up basically back up to here. 24-hour shut-in, something like that. So that this next is going to go you know, down like that. Okay? And then there's another shut-in here. That's by definition the isochronal test. So that when we start drawing down again, it's basically drawing down. Oops, let's see here. We got the So 
So this has to go to like that. Okay, and then we shut it in here. And then, oops, went a little too far. We shut it in again. Here. And then we get a new drawdown. Like that. Okay. So I've, I've clipped away the shut ins. But each time, I'm just saying that the shut-in needs to be long enough that we basically get back up to close to initial pressure at the end of the shut-in. That's the theory of an isochronal test. Okay. Now, to use the data, what we have to do is that we have to go in and Choose the data rate in PWF at the same <coughs> period of production. What that would mean, for example, in this case would be, for example, at two hours. Because every one of the flow tests has data at two hours, right? But the first rate doesn't have data at eight hours, but it has it at one hour and at two hours. So I could take, I say two hours, I could use one hour. I could use 10 minutes. So what that means is that I want to take this point, I want to take this point this point and this point for the rates, this point for the pressure, this point for the pressure, this point for the pressure, and this point for the pressure. That's what you that's the that's the isochronal test. Okay? Huh? I, I can't hear it. Well, it, whatever it achieves, it's the same for each flow rate. The PD, what this guarantees here, what this is supposed to guarantee is that the PD is the same for each rate. Because PD is not a function of rate, right? PD is not a function of rate. It's only a function of time. Okay. At two hours. We don't know what the value is, but nature says that it should be the same value. And that'll become part of the A constant. <coughs> right? Don't get complicated on me. In gas wells, two hours is long enough usually to be out of storage. Okay? But we can't get complicated. If, two, if storage is still going in two hours, you have to run the flow rate needs to minimum be whatever it is to get out of storage. But for gas wells, that's typically long enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. If that's the case, what if you just say three hours and then you just exclude the first two? Then you would have three points instead of four. That's right. That's right. And then the point is that when you do that, and you plot P pseudo pressure initial minus P pseudo pressure WF over rate, okay, for each of the tests, however many tests you have, each point. You hopefully will get versus rate, sorry. You hopefully, if, if the Forsheimer equation applies to this well, then hopefully you'll get something that falls like on a straight line. And the intercept here is your A, 
and the slope here is B. This is for two hours. If we'd done it for one hour, if we took the data for one hour, and we had no storage, whatever that is, okay, what would the line look like? What would the points look like? Well, let's look at the equation for A in Fetkovich's paper. A transient. If the time is increasing, then A should increase, right? It's proportional. That means that one hour No, I'm sorry. A, but PD is less for so. PD is proportional with time, right? Okay. So it's going to be down here. One hour. One hour. Okay. And we can plot for the second, third, and fourth rates. We can plot at four hours, right? Four hours would look, we don't have the first one, but we got, that's for four hours, okay? Okay? <laughs> that's what it should look like. The slope B should be the same, irregardless. But this A is a function of time, as it should be. I don't want to go there because I mean how different could it be I mean if if it's different then something is not right and okay I mean if we if we took this well that had eight points before cleanup and after cleanup then a is going to be radically different because because the skin changed hugely okay I'm sure you can find wells that but there are many wells actually published, some of them published, I think uh, the papers, where they actually plot A as a function of time and fit that, they do their pressure transient analysis with A, okay? Because A is a function, is proportional to PD, okay? So if you're a well testing pressure transient analysis person, you can take A as a function of time, match it to your PD solution, that is pressure transient analysis. And instead of using pressures, you're using A because it captures both the, the pressure change and the rate change, okay? To get your permeability, skin, et cetera, okay? Pressure transient analysis is now using A instead of pressure as a function of time. And this is not done by Fetkovich. I think he might suggest it, but there's a, there are some publications where that's done. Again, I think by Phillips people way back in the in the 50s and 60s. They actually show that being done. That's true. It's the same as pressure transient analysis. Same old. Um, you have to use. You have to bring in a build-up analysis. <clears throat> this is only drawdown analysis. To get the skin, you always have to bring in a build-up analysis to get rid of the skin. That's always the case. You guys should have learned that last semester. Okay. Okay. So that's what's meant by isochronal. 
the, the, the traditional isochronal is that you have shut in between each flow rate, and that's basically to bring the system back to the initial conditions. Close. Okay? And then the second thing is that the isochronal part is not that the test duration has to be the same period, but the data you pick from the test, each test, needs to be the same duration. And that's so that we get the same PD, so that we have the same A, so we can interpret it. Don't expect to just like, oh, yeah, everything is crystal clear now. I mean, I honestly probably read the paper five, ten times before, you know, uh, you know different things sunk in at different times, and I still have a few things I, I probably struggle with, but, but, um, okay, so, so that's, um, Okay, so that's one of the things that, again, he gives the equations, he, he, he talks about this, but um, when he uses the average, he's talking about the A that's invariant of time, because now the, time, the, 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 the thing that's changing <coughs> in time here is the average pressure. It's slowly changing with time. But that's the equation. Now, we're going to look at this, which can also be written in the more familiar form as an approximation to the above equation. Okay, and I think I, I tried to talk a little bit about that last time. What we have is a quadratic equation, and we're going to approximate that by this, this thing here, which looks even more complicated. Okay, why would we do that? Okay, so that's... that's uh, Approximating the quadratic Forsheimer equation by what's called the back pressure um, equation. And this is the back pressure, the, what I call the, the reservoir back pressure. I think he has a different term for it. It's, um, um, yeah, reservoir and surface. Yeah, so it, he uses the same thing, the reservoir back pressure equation. So it's important distinction because next, next week we're going to come back to the paper and we're going to look at, at, a, at the surface that this is the reservoir back pressure equation. Okay, which is written this way, constant pseudo pressure volumetric average minus pseudo pressure bottom of flowing pressure to the power n. Okay, so it has two constants just like the quadratic does. And that's to approximate this. Okay. What we're saying is this is right and this is approximate. <coughs> Average of yeah, you have the average of the oh, no, that's not it. It's just it's like I'm gonna blame the cold on that one. Sorry. Okay. 
In today's world, we say, why the hell would you simplify a quadratic equation, which is as simple as you can get, with something that looks even more or complicated, okay? Why would you do that? We did it because this is what's being used from the 40s, 50s, 60s, and into the 70s when we didn't have Excel. We didn't have, okay? We use graphical plotting, and the reason is because we use graphical um, log log plotting. Uh, was all that was available. not Excel. Okay. By the way, Excel was not the first. It's just Excel has become the only spreadsheet we use. Um, I'm not sure who the first was, but um, I think the Apple had the first what they call office-like software package. And there's a, one of the pioneers in the industry in reservoir simulation and reservoir engineering. His name is Charlie Hearn. Retired. He worked for Occidental for 40 years. And um, in the same generation as uh, he was a Rice graduate. He wasn't a PhD, but he was a Rice graduate and did some very, very important things. Charlie Hearn, his son was the, team, was, was the group of young guys trying to make a, a buck <coughs> when computers were just coming out who wrote the first office-like package for the Macintosh when he was a kid, you know, young, young adult. Sold it to Apple, and then, of course, it never really, really took off, but he made enough money that he, <laughs> interesting story about that. Um, Charlie's a banjo player, kind of, kind of from Nashville, Tennessee. It's a, I've never met a son, but apparently the son used it after a few years, this money he got to take a PhD, I think at MIT, and, and now, the last I heard, he was writing these apps for, for the iPhone. So, you know, the, the picture that you, you can take a kind of a picture and keep it horizontal and then it'll make it into one panorama. His app was the first one doing that. So, he, anyway, this is kind of an interesting story. So this Excel, th that kind of computational power was not available back then, that is now. So when I say Excel, I mean computers. Okay. And so on this log log paper, which was available on everybody's desk, all every engineering's desk, we plotted gas rate um, in, I'll use Fetkovich's thousand standard cubic feet per day because you can multiply that by a few dollars and get the, the value. So we might be down here at 100 thousand you're getting into wells like are making you a bunch of money ten thousand now you're in the north sea like area and today we actually in north sea and places like australia and other parts of the world um, i think the north field pretty much all the wells are on about 75 million per day for <laughs> 10 20 however many years they they'll last um, so we're getting into the range of really large wells. And then we plot that versus, generally they used average reservoir pressure squared minus, because, because in the old days, pressure squared could be used. But if we do it kind of more properly, then we can do it this way. So the pressure drop would be done like this. And this would have, a, a, again, a log scale Big numbers, I don't know, 10 to the 6th, I don't know, 10 to the 7th. Should be the same size axis here, so I'm going to try to do that. This is 1, 2, well, this is really terrible. Um, God forbid Mike would ever watch this video, but since it's out there, if he did, I don't want to make this look. One, two, three, four, five thousand. One, two, three, four, five, ten thousand. One, two, three, four, okay. And then ten to the seventh, one, two, three, four, five, ten to the sixth, one, two, three, four, five, ten. Something like that. 
Okay. And we've already talked about this a little bit. So if we go in and, and you could just make these plots like this, <clears throat> and on the log log, this equation here, this first approximate equation, would plot as a straight line. Okay. Well, let's let's do it differently. Let's 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 say that we we plot this quadratic with points. Okay. So I'm going to take it all the way up to here. This is PWF zero. So this value here is P pseudo pressure initial, okay, or reservoir, okay. So it's PWF zero. So this is the maximum maximum rate the well can make. And then if you plot this quadratic equation, it's gonna it's gonna have curvature. Okay, because it's quadratic, and on a log-log plot, it'll look something like that. Okay. Okay. Depending on the a and the b, it'll it'll be curved, something like that. But what you'll find is that. In the range of, of real interest, this is, you know, we're, we're really making money, you know, certainly up in the higher rates. And certainly for the initial test, you can get a, a reasonable approximation. Let's put that in, in purple or something, crosses. If we had our initial test were up in here, this plots more or less as a straight line. Okay, and the slope of this is equal to 1 over n. Okay. And so in this initial range where we're making all our money, I mean the, the, the one or two orders of magnitude of rate that we produce and really make money, so if n I'm just going to call it where it's a straight line in this relevant, the relevant in. Um, if it's approximately one, okay, then that's basically saying that B is like the, the BQ squared term is not important. Okay? So basically, B is, it doesn't have any effect. There's no non Darcy effect. There's no turbulence like flow. Okay. If n is about 0.5 or very low, then effectively B is the dominant. So A is effectively not contributing. In other words, the Darcy component to pressure drop is overshadowed by the pressure drop due to the second term. And Fetkovich calls this laminar. Shame on you, says a boss fears body. Okay, laminar, and he calls this turbulent. Dominated, laminar dominated, and turbulent dominated. But in general, what we see is that N lies somewhere between 1 and 0.5 for diff different wells, okay? Yeah? This N is not the same as <coughs> the approximation N, right? It is. The, that is the approximation. That is the same N. So we plot the data and then we select the points. That's right. So we select these, these, these points here, these three or four points here, and we put a straight line through it. That's exactly what we do. Yeah. That's what was done. Uh, is that uh, n a function of uh, kh? Yeah, so n is what we should 
Fetkovich talks about it in the paper that N is a function of really more permeability than cage. We'll look at that here, here in a second. <coughs> but um, what it's really saying is the, um, if, if you look at the A, let me just, if you look at the A QG versus the B QG squared term, okay, the, the, okay, if it's 0.5, then the one term is small compared to the other, okay. So, so that's what it's really saying. So N is going to be the, kind of the relative importance of these two terms. N is 0.75, both terms are important. N is 0.95, you can kind of ignore the non-Darcy effect. N is 0.6, then it's turbulent flow or, or non-Darcy flow. I have to tell you a story because we got a few minutes before the break. This is a tr another true story. I think I've already told it, but it, yeah, it's like a good joke. <coughs> Mike was here for a couple of weeks. We were teaching a gas a PhD course in gas condensate, or gas this stuff. Uh, together 25, 30 years ago, I don't know. And at that time, we had a consulting project for a field in, in Pakistan. And um, Buriel, he's from Pakistan. Is anybody else from Pakistan here? Okay. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. And we were working on this field, and I, I'm trying to remember the name. It was a single porosity fracture. So it was just a fractured piece of rock, gas condensate. Do you remember the name? Ratana? Rotana, do you know the field of Rotana? I think it was Rotana. Maybe they changed the name after. Anyway, I, it, best I recall, it was called Rotana, but it, was, it doesn't matter, really matter. And so we were supposed to do a PVT work on this field, gas condensate, and we were doing the PVT stuff. But they sent us, as part of the study, they sent us um, the initial production test, mainly to see how the gas oil ratio varied or didn't vary with, with drawdown, with rate. So I had like the four-point test of rate, just exactly like this. Well, this is a single, this is like a piece of granite just fractured. I don't know what kind of rock it was, but it's effectively only a fractured reservoir, okay? It's just the, the porosity was the fracture porosity. And um, so the story goes like this, that we, had, we got this data in as an email maybe not that long ago. Maybe we got it as a fax or something. And... So I picked up Mike every morning to come to the lecture, and that evening I had made the back pressure plot like this of the data. Calculated the pseudo pressure because it was kind of higher pressure and did the whole pseudo pressure. I got in the car and said, Mike, and I tell him this story. I said, we're working on this, you know, this single porosity fractured gas condensate well, and they sent us this data, and I, he loves this stuff. And I said, and, you know, I did the back pressure plot, and he says, wait. He says, was the slope, was the, was the exponent in 0.55? He said, he didn't say point in 0.5. He, I mean, and it was like so embarrassing. It was like 0.562. I mean, it was, he said, it's, it's obvious, Whitson. It has to be, you know, it's, just, it's, it's fracture, it's flow and fracture. You got all this flow flowing through this very small fracture, and that, that's the characteristic of, of turbulent, that's what you get, turbulent flow at high gas velocities. I just said nothing, I just kind of gave up, you know. How do you beat a guy like this, you know? So it was completely dominated by, by this uh, effect. I don't know, it was 0.562 or 0.52, it was something very close to five, what do you guess? Um, so that's what it's really saying, is it's saying what's, what's dominating the pressure drop, okay, that, uh, that slope. And even though the, the Forsheimer will deviate off, and of course, if you go to a low enough rate, you know, if you plot it down to one MCF per day, the AQ term will become the dominant term. So this thing has to approach one at a low enough rate. 
Do you agree? Yes. If you make Q small enough, then the Q square becomes negligible. But of course, at those rates, <laughs> as Mike would say, you know, you know, why the hell do you care? Okay. That it turns the corner and because all of our money is being made in a sense in that read, at least for a company like Phillips Petroleum. So that was that's this discussion here in the paper. And <clears throat> um, let's see here. And that's his discussion here about using this. And then he goes back into this breaking it into the laminar and then trying to discuss, you know, why uh, why one might be more dominant than the other. So this is a nice, you know, you can try to follow this now. He calls it L for laminar. Um, I think. So let's just read before we break. So there's a plot of this that we just looked at of the back pressure test data will readily yield A from the intercept and B from the slope. Plotting transient flow data, the intercept would be a function of time, from which we could readily calculate skin. He implicitly says you have to bring in buildup data to do that. Okay? He, he, he doesn't say it in words. But if you go to the back of the paper where he actually does the skin calculation for this well, This Hewitt field well. This one here. This is the actual data. The one I, I was doing the cartoon of. Can you guys read this? This is the flow test one. They're numbered. One, that's the first flow test. So Fetters is doing the flow test. This is 10, 12 million cubic feet per day in the 1960s in offshore North Sea, you know, where they got like, you don't want to blow out. Second rate went down to 650 MCF per day. I'm sorry, 6.5 million per day. Third rate just above, basically to retrace, to, to see that you got the same pressure drop as the original. Then he runs it up to 20 million a day. I mean, this is a guy who was in West Texas and Oklahoma. You don't have 20 million a day wells, period. So this was exciting. And this guy got a thrill out of this. This was like off-pissed petroleum engineering, okay? He runs the four. That deviation that you're seeing right there with your eyes, that's what got this guy a vice president salary for a while, okay? What made Phillips Petroleum Company a lot of money because there was allocation going on based on this test. Made him a lot of money. And that's when he called in to the boss. The boss says, don't run it up to higher rate. He ignored the boss, and he went to rate 5. How many is, is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70? Now, this is off piss. This is like going to the, I mean, this is like crazy. 70 million a day. And then shows this shift here, 0.5. Goes back down to where you were there. Why did he do that? Was this just a fluke? Was it the gauge, pressure gauges stopped working? Went back down here to see, would it jump back on that curve there? No, it didn't. It was creating a new curve. More or less the same slope, a little bit different. Traces it, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Now, I would have liked to heard the conversation going on between him and the boss because, you know, the, the boss would understand how important it was getting this much better back pressure curve for Phillips. He knew, he knew the value of it. So had he run it to 70 million and it stayed on this curve here, he probably get it fired. That's what I suspect. Probably should have got fired, but he didn't. So this is actually the, that, that test data. And in, the, and in this same paper, he does the calculations. We were talking about the skin thing there. does the calculations of skin for this test somewhere up here. Here. It's well C.
and he's doing the calculations and you have to have from well C see from build up that's what you're asking you have to have the cage from the build up not magic but it's like what you guys know from pressure trans analysis once you got the cage independently from the build up then you can go and get the skin all right so that's so we'll take a break